Are the new simulation Evo 1 pedals the better buy over the VRS? In today's video we're gonna find out. As usual, disclaimer first, these pedals were provided by New Simulation for the review, but all the opinions are my own and New Simulation does not get to see the script before it's posted. So we'll start with the price. The two pedal set comes in at 614 euros, including taxes. The three pedal set is 819 euros plus taxes. I think this is very competitive pricing for what you're getting and is comparable to the VRS pedals. Here you also get a heel rest included in the price. And if you want to get the additional bass shaker mount that is available for the heel rest, this is an additional 10 euros. The VRS pedals are probably my all time favorite pedals of all the passive pedals that I've tested, but these here are actually better in many areas. We will start with build quality and specs. Overall, build quality is a little mixed back. We do have the typical laser cut stainless steel assembly here. There are absolutely no sharp edges anywhere. And I think it looks pretty cool with this brushed look, except for the throttle faceplate. For whatever reason, the brushed look is, is not available here. It is on the brake, not here, but it is pretty much everywhere else on all the parts that are visible. And I think it looks pretty good. There are the occasional burn marks on some smaller cut areas and a little better cleanup of the parts would be nice, but it's not the end of the world. And if it annoys you, you can always like remove them yourself, but it would be nice if they came without them. The build overall is incredibly solid. There's absolutely zero flex anywhere. You will, like even when these are mounted on the rig and I try to wiggle the pedal arm, there's zero movement. Oops, obviously there's movement in the direction that you want. There are ball bearings used in all the major pivot points here in the bottom. And there are absolutely zero complaints regarding rigidity or flex. So why is it a mixed bag then? Well, there are some 3D printed parts that are being used here and there. The 3D printed parts itself are of decent quality and they basically only hold a metal assembly in place. There are no forces that go on the parts, but I do wish higher quality looking technology of 3D printing was used. This is the classical FDM layer based printing and it just gives me these DIY vibes. I mean, it works perfectly fine. There will be no wear of these parts. It's purely from an aesthetical point of view. And for example, SimGrade also uses 3D printing on their pedals, but they use a nicer looking technology and then you don't immediately go, ah, okay, this is 3D printed. I don't know. <laughs> Not a big problem. Doesn't hurt the performance of these pedals at all. It's just when you look at it and you see the 3D printed parts, yeah, whatever. The pedals itself are freaking huge. These are probably the tallest pedals that I've reviewed. Not the biggest ones, that's definitely the Simicube ones, but they are tall. And you can probably see in the front, there's this little part here that protrudes. You will have to use a heel plate with these pedals. It comes with a heel plate, so just use that. If you want to use your own, make sure that the heel plate is mounted higher than the base of the pedals is. The heel rest that is provided is actually really comfortable. I mean, it's just like a piece of aluminum no sharp edges and your heels can rest on this. And it's actually sitting on some rubber isolators. Like you see if I, I mean, the screws aren't tightened here, but you get the idea. And why are they using this? Well, there's an option that you can mount a bass shaker onto this part. I think that's a really, really good idea because then it's isolated from the rest of the rig and you will feel the vibrations very nicely in your heels. I do not have the version with the bass shaker mount, but bass shaker on pedals can help a lot. You won't get something like the SimiCube active pedals kind of feedback, but it's getting in that direction. If you use SimHub, for example, to generate some of these effects, and there are actually more effects available on a bass shaker than on the SimiCube pedals, for example, like you can have tire lock up on there, and that can just be a very helpful additional feedback that you can get from the pedals. I think mounting it on the heel plate makes sense, but if you want to mount it directly to the brake pedal, for example, if you have a braking technique where your heel do not touch this plate or if you use shoes, then I guess mounting it to the brake pedal directly might be better. There's also a little adapter that you can buy for 20 euros that lets you mount a bass shaker directly to the brake pedal arm. So I haven't tested it on these pedals, but I tried it on the Niam SimTag pedals and I found it very helpful. So I think this is an addition that I would definitely recommend to add to these pedals. But let's have a closer look at the throttle first. You have tons of adjustability and you have a throttle pedal that can be really, really strong. I definitely like that. I'm not a big fan of these no resistance throttle pedals, like for example, the VRS. The VRS are excellent pedals, but the throttle pedal, I wish there was an option to add a stronger spring because that weird bendy spring, even on the stiffest setting, it's just not very strong. And here, I don't even use the highest setting, no, I don't. This can go ridiculously strong. Oh, I have the screw right now for the end stop. But yeah, 
everybody will find a setting that works for them because this can go from very light if you put this in the lower positions to very strong with a little bit of preload and this rod in the highest position. The end stops for the pedals are silent. Be careful here. <laughs> The end stops actually work kind of differently than on most pedals. The air hose part here in the bottom is actually the end stop for the idle position. And with this screw, I saw some reviews where it was explained a bit wrong. With the screw, you adjust the end stop here, like how much travel you want to have and not the, the end stop in the zero position. So if you want really, really low travel on the throttle, you can just like screw this all the way in and then this is all you get, or even, even more extreme, you get the idea. And then counter the setting that you prefer with this little nut. And then you can also change the idle position and basically the angle of the pedal arm by adjusting this little rod here that holds that air hose here. You cannot adjust the angle of the whole pedal assembly. All you can do is change the angle of the pedal arm itself. I think in the end it does exactly the same, but yeah, it's not done like on most pedals where you have these elongated holes or multiple mounting positions there. The pedal faces itself are very comfortable, very nice to use with socks as well. You can adjust the height very, very easily. All you need to do is loosen the screw a little bit. It's held by a little T-nut in the, in the back, and then you can adjust the height to your liking. After you're done, just tighten the screw slightly. You don't have to like overdo this like crazy and super, super solid mounting, no problems here and easy adjustment. There's a kind of interesting mechanism in the bottom here. You can see that the pedal arm moves this little axis here that is then mounted to a hall sensor actually that rotates on an axis or might also be a magnet. I don't know, I didn't take it apart. In the end, the measuring of the pedal position is done with a hall sensor, which is probably the best way how to implement it on a throttle or clutch because it doesn't wear, it is a quick reading. I would always prefer this over something like a load cell or potentiometer because load cell is slightly slower, not that it really matters on track and a potentiometer can wear and will wear. We probably all had potentiometers on pedals that broke. For an additional 15 euros, you can get one of these end stops for the throttle pedal so your foot doesn't slip off the pedal. I think that's very nice and I can recommend getting that. I don't have it here for testing, but I've tested it on other pedals and always liked how that felt while driving. Then on the side, there's also the cable that connects directly to the brake for the electronics. 16-bit reading here, way more than needed. But yeah, overall, this is a great throttle pedal with tons of adjustability, can go from super light to super heavy, and I don't have anything to criticize on the throttle. Finally, a throttle pedal that can go really, really stiff. I definitely like that because I think it helps on corner exit to not thunderfoot the car too quickly. And for me personally, I always prefer a stronger throttle pedal with a higher resistance. But yeah, let's move to the brake. And the first thing you probably ask yourself is what the hell is going on here? Why are there two stacks of springs or elastomeres. And yeah, I think it's one of the craziest looking pedals that I've tested so far. I don't think I've had any other pedals with a similar concept like this, because here we have the main elastomer stack that also is connected to the load cell, consisting of a spring and an elastomer. You also get this in the box, a softer spring and some other elastomers to try out. But to be honest, the default position was pretty much perfect. I did not even try any other settings because this was the setting that works very well for me. And then on the bottom, we have an, a secondary part that is called compression amplifier, even though I don't think it amplifies the compression. It basically gives more resistance on the pedal, depending on where this nut is. But we'll talk about that later. Adjustments is pretty much the same as on the throttle. You have the garden hose part here that you can adjust to change the angle of the pedal arm in the idle position. Then you have the screw in the front to adjust the pedal face in height. No adjustment of the whole pedal angle, but it's also not really needed with this adjustment. And obviously there's no end stop here because this is basically determined by how much pressure you want to put on the pedal and not by a mechanical end stop. Pedal face is slightly wider compared to the throttle and also feels very comfortable to use with shoes and with socks. In the back, we have the classic 200 kilogram Mavin load cell that's probably being used on most of the pedals. I don't know the exact maximum pedal pressure that is possible on the pedal face here, but it's probably way over 130 kilograms because I was not able to max these pedals out. So to adjust the stiffness and the travel to pedal pressure ratio, there are so many options on this brake. First, kind of like on the throttle, you can move where this primary spring stack attaches to the pedal arm. You can see I have it in the highest position here. That means I get the lowest amount of travel for a specific pressure on the pedal face. 
let's say I put 50 kilograms on here. That means in this position, I get, for example, one centimeter of travel. If I had this in the lowest position and I put 50 kilograms on the pedal face, then the load cell would still output exactly the same output because it's 50 kilograms, but I might get like three or four centimeters of movement. Okay, second possibility is exchange the springs. I showed you the elastomeres. It's super easy to exchange this. You just have to remove the preload on the spring or just put a little bit of pressure on here and then this thing slides out. And then you can basically take out the whole assembly, exchange the spring or the elastomere, put it back on and you're good to go. I think the ease of adjustment always helps because if it's such a pain to adjust a pedal, then you won't do it. And you might end up with a setting that actually is not the best for your personal preference. So yeah, this is good, very easy to adjust. Third option, well, preload on the spring. We know that from many other pedals. And finally, the fourth option is this little thing in the bottom here. So what this is doing, as you can see, the main spring stack is attached to this metal part and this metal part here connects to the Mevin load cell. Whereas the compression amplifier, how they call it, actually connects from the pedal arm to the main frame. So all resistance that is being done by this compression amplifier is not measured by the load cell. So what you wanna do is like, first of all, put this nut here all the way to the top so that this is not doing anything even if you add a lot of pressure. Find a pedal pressure that is comfortable for you to use. And then what you can do is basically fine tune a specific point or like starting at a specific point in that pedal travel where this compression amplifier will start to engage and basically make the pedal stiffer. I like to put it in a setting where it starts at about 70, 75% because on iRacing and on many other games, this is typically around the threshold breaking point that you do not want to exceed. And with this, you can feel this point and it will make the whole break a little bit more progressive at this part. The downside is if you use a very stiff break, this becomes relatively negligible. You don't feel it as well as if you use a soft break. With this setting here, it is pretty stiff. I can still notice it, but if you go higher than that, I don't think this makes a very significant difference. And another downside is you will actually make your game output nonlinear as soon as this part actually starts to get activated. Because then the resistance that this part is generating will not be measured by the load cell because it's just between the frame and the pedal arm. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad or anything. It's just something that you have to consider. Don't use this too much. Don't compress it at the very beginning and and use it for that. Fine tune your brake first by only using the primary axis here. And then after that, play around with the compression amplifier and see if it adds something that you like or not. If you do not like it, make sure you go to the internet and tell everybody how bad it is, right? That's how the internet goes today. No, I'm just kidding. It is there. If you like it, use it. If you do not like it, then just like have the screw on the highest position and then it's not doing anything. So overall, I think the adjustability is very, very nice. I like the very linear feel that the spring gives you. If you want a more progressive feel, you can play with this compression amplifier here. The only thing the pedals cannot do very well, at least not with the stuff that you get in the box, is the brick wall brake. I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but there are people out there that prefer to have an, a brake that basically does not move. I personally can't drive like that, but with the elements you get in the box, even with the stiffest spring and the hard elastomeres. I mean, maybe if you put on a lot of preload on the spring, then you can probably get close to that. But if you really want a super, super, super stiff brake, I think there are better options than these. I mean, this setting can definitely be achieved easier by adding an even stiffer spring and stiffer elastomeres or spacers. All right, let's talk about electronics and software next. The electronics are embedded in the brake pedal very elegant. You can see it here, it's below this plastic cover and it's just the standard Bodnar LC USB amplifier. It uses an AD7192 by Analog Devices for measuring the load cell and the hall sensors. 24-bit precision, down sample to 16-bit. Nobody needs that in sim racing, but it's good to have. The mounting options also are very cool. It's just the USB cables from the throttle and the clutch that attach to the side here and that is then internally routed to that little Bodnar board. And then here you have the USB to the PC port. Unfortunately, as it is the case with most pedals that use the Bodnar board, there's no software. It's not the end of the world, but I think a pedal set these days should come with a software in case you wanna adjust your pedal curve to something logarithmic or exponential or something. And also the calibration in DI view 
works, it is a bit more cumbersome than having a calibration tool in your software. And also games like iRacing, for example, like to ignore the DI view calibration. So you have to fiddle around with text files there as well. I'll show you how to do the calibration in the rig in a second. But yeah, there's no software. I wish there was a software because it's an excellent pedal set. And I think an excellent pedal set should have a software. Then the mounting is a little painful. I think it's probably the pedal set with the worst mounting that I've tested so far. It's not like it's a big problem to reach these holes here, but the brackets that connect the heel plate to the pedal also are mounted with the same two screws and then it has to be in a specific distance. Here, these are the brackets and you can see there are the elongated holes, but the problem is if this plate is mounted, you cannot reach the holes here that connect to this. It's not the end of the world. You only do that once unless you're a pedal reviewer and you change pedals all the time. But I just wanted to point it out that this is, yeah, it gave me some headache <laughs> and a lot of sweat while trying to mount this. But once they are mounted, it's, it's not a big problem. Let's be honest here. But yeah, I did not have a lot of fun mounting this to the rig. And talking of not a lot of fun mounting this to the rig, I think I will do just that now. And then I'll see you in the rig. Okay, so I just installed the pedals. It was a pain again. I don't know. I think the whole mounting to the rig thing is not very well designed. You only do it once, but still, I did not have a lot of fun. But they are on there. I'll quickly show you how to calibrate them in DI view. So grab the software, then go to edit settings. Make sure that the load cell interface, LC USB, is selected. And then you see the pedals here. Z is the throttle, Y is the brake. Make sure to do a right click and go view raw data. And all you have to do is pretty much check these raw values. Go to calibration. So the raw value for the throttle in the resting position is 12,600 or something. So we'll do 13,000 to have a little bit of dead zone. Uh, maybe 13,500. Okay, then you want to do the same thing at the end. So 30,000 or something. Let's put this in here. And then what you want to do is add these two up. So that is 43,500. And divide this by two. And then put this value in the center column here. And then you can see the calibrated output is the black one. That is nicely calibrated from zero to 100%. Then repeat the same thing with the brake, you get the idea. I also show you the calibration in iRacing and how you can adjust it manually afterwards. All right, when you're on iRacing, you go to options and you do the regular pedal calibration. So click on pedals, do the throttle thing, and then you notice these values here. It's the same as the raw values from DI view. Just do your regular calibration once, don't pay too much attention to it. Click done. And after you've done that, go to your documents iRacing folder. And then there's this file called joycalib.yaml. Open it with a text editor. And then what you want to find is the load cell interface, LCUSB. And in calib min and max, you basically put in these values that you got from your DIY calibration earlier. Save it, restart iRacing, and then you have the proper calibration values with your dead zones baked in. You can also just calibrate it in here, but it's very likely that you won't get a very precise calibration. I don't know why iRacing ignores the DI view calibration, but also I think a pedal set should just have a proper calibration baked into the hardware so you don't have to fiddle with these settings. But yeah, I would say we'll just drive a little bit. I'll talk about the pedals. I'll give you my conclusion, my verdict. Would I buy them uh, while on track? Holy shit, this is loud. Let's make this a bit quieter. It's not about the game sound here. But yeah, overall, this is a really good pedal set. I do like the throttle pedal a lot. I like that you can get pretty high resistance there. It helps a ton to properly feel what the... No, not feel, but to properly control the car on corner exit. Um, and not thunderfoot it too much. I use medium travel on the throttle. You can get way more than what you see on the pedal camera right now. But that is my preferred configuration. And it's pretty much what I've done. I tweaked on the Cinecube cube pedals the throttle how I like it and then I did the same thing basically I transferred the settings from the Simic pedals to these and it worked here in this case most pedals cannot go such a high to such a high uh, pedal pressure on the throttle so yeah the throttle is very very nice very adjustable and the brake also what I like on this brake over the VRS brake is it feels more linear even with the compression amplifier why do I brake for this <laughs> even with the compression amplifier enabled it just 
feels less progressive than the VRS break. If you like a very progressive break, then this might not necessarily be for you. But for me, it feels very good. You can get tons of travel on the brake. I mean, this is the, one of the stiffest settings right now. And you can see there's still, let me actually, you can see there is still a lot of travel in the brake. I'm not a big fan of, of the no travel brake thingy. And I also don't want to tell you that you need to use the settings that I prefer or you have to do it like this because that's how it's done in real life. Who cares what they do in real life? Set your brake to a setting that works the best for you in your rig and don't let somebody else tell you what you have to do in the brake. So I think it's always good to have adjustability on the brake to be able to achieve whatever you want. If you want to have the crazy brick wall setting here, you would probably have to add a crazy amount of preload to the spring to get the, the spring movement out of the way pretty much. Um, but with the elements this pedal set comes with, I think it's pretty much not optimized to give you a brick wall setting. You can do it by adding spacers, by adding a stiffer spring, no problem. It's a load cell brake. All it does is measure the travel, uh, the pressure on the face, on the pedal face. So in theory that is possible, but not with what you get in the box. Then the compression amplifier. Basically, it's hard to see because the elastomer is dark, but at about this point here, 70-ish percent is where it starts to engage. And you feel it, even though I run a relatively stiff brake, you still feel it. It is much more noticeable on lower settings. Just keep in mind, do not, I would, I mean, that's what I would recommend. Don't use it for brake settings below 50-60% because it will affect the output and the linearity of that output to the game. So after that, I think it's nice to add the progression. It's nice to add the little bit of squishiness in the in the high braking percentage scenarios. But before that, I would not really use it. So yeah, my personal experience with this pedal set has been very good. I can recommend it. I do wish the 3D print was a bit higher quality or a different technology that looks higher quality. And I also wish it had a software with proper calibration. I don't really need the pedal curves, like non-linear curves or something. I do like a slightly logarithmic one on the brake, but it's not essential. And I think it's better to practice your braking and improve that than rely on artificial bent curves. But that's my opinion. But I do wish it had a proper calibration. I don't know how calibration in the eye view works, but it just it's so cumbersome and not comfortable. And then you have to do the same thing with the text files and eye racing, and yeah, it's not ideal. But overall, still a very good pedal set that performs very nicely. I probably would use this pedal set over the VRS pedals because the throttle can be much stiffer. And also because I like the more linear feeling of the brake. That obviously is very personal preference. Some other people might prefer the VRS pedals. But yeah, I think for the price they are asking, 614 euros, this is a really good pedal set. There are some quirks that I would love to see improved, like give us a software. Maybe think about how this heel rest is mounted to the pedals, because it is just a pain to mount this to your rig. The price is fair, it is made in Germany. So yeah, overall I think it's a good pedal set with just a few points that I would love to see improved. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below or just let me know what other kind of content you would love to see in the future. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye.